Hi, this is Robin Bremer and you're watching Walks with God. Today we are going to continue on our series uh, from my book, Feed My People Joy. Kingdom Living for End Times and how to bring a revival uh, to your community. And um, the reason that I call it that is because when you know the things that are written in this book, the word says that this, this kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached and the end will come. And the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. And when you know you are the righteousness of God, when you know you are right with God, that no matter what you do, you are still God's child. You are still loved with God. You are righteous. You are made righteous, not by works, but by faith in the work that Jesus did. You're no longer a sinner. No matter what you do, you are the righteousness of God. When you know that, you will have peace you will have joy, you will have understanding of who you are, you will operate in the authority of the kingdom of God. And when you do that, you will be bringing revival to your community because you will be changing things and demonstrating the power of God. After all, when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, with God, you have a supernatural relationship. Everything in your uh, life should not be like the world. It should be totally opposite. When they're in recession, you should be financially booming. When they're sick, you should be healthy. Everything about the kingdom of God is prosperous. Body, spirit, soul, and finances, family, relationships, everything in the kingdom of God is beyond everything you ask, imagine, or think, and more than you need so that you have abundance to give. Well, I could preach on that, but I'm going to share from my book today on the kingdom of peace. And that's chapter 10. And... Um, like I, uh, let's see, uh, God's will for you is to live on earth like you will in heaven. When God originally created the earth, he created it perfect. And I'm going to go over some of the things there uh, in this chapter. Uh, when he created day and night, he said it is good. He created the earth's atmosphere and he said it is good. He created, he did not create the earth's atmosphere for principalities, powers, and dominions. He created the earth's that's my kitty cat there. He created the earth's atmosphere for us to rule over and to have dominion over. Um, he did not create bad weather, which people call acts of God. He created good weather. And just the other day, I was um, um, driving home from church, and it was lightning. And um, I've always been fascinated by lightning. I just get in awe. I watch, and I go, wow. You know, God's power is even greater than that. And I said, God, lightning destroys and lightning... Um, kills cattle, it kills people, it kills trees, it kills, it destroys, it's so powerful. I said, why am I so fascinated with lightning? What is it about lightning? And he said, he created it to be beautiful. This really like gives me goosebumps. <laughs> he said that, um, wait till that noisy truck goes by, he said that he created lightning for our pleasure. That lightning was created beautiful. That lightning was not created to destroy. That lightning was created for our pleasure, for our enjoyment. I thought, oh, that's really cool. And then he reminded me that the Bible says that lightning like like shafts of light come from God's from Jesus' hands. And um, his and and we're created in his image. And so it was I thought that was really neat. Anyway, back to this. Um uh, he created weather perfect and for our comfort. God gathered the waters in the seas and he said it's good. He didn't, call, he didn't create water for the sharks, for the jellyfish, for things that kill us and destroy us. He didn't create the waters to have animals in them that just de de destroyed us. He created the animals in them for our pleasure and for our needs and for everything that we needed. So the shark, the jellyfish, and everything on earth that hurts and kills us now is the result of the fall of man which made the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom fall also but he created it good he created plant life and said it's good he didn't create poison ivy and poison oak to poison us he created to them things to bless us um, he created the moon and the stars so we could see and he said it is good he didn't create the moon and the stars and the sun to be worshipped he created animals in the sea and the air and the ground and said it is good. None of the, those animals were created to hurt us in any way. The snake, the black widow, the grizzly, the cougar, other animals and bugs were created good and they were not created to hurt us. In the fall of man they became um, twisted and wanted to hurt us. 
God created all things for our enjoyment. Okay? God created man in his image and his likeness, and he told us to subdue and have dominion over all the earth. And he called us his kids. He said it, it is very good. And God created us in his image. And up to that point, the only thing that we saw in Genesis 1 through to 126 was God said, and then God saw, and God said, and God saw, and God said, and God saw, and it was good, it was good, it was good. And then he said, let's create man in our image. So the image that we're created in, that God revealed them himself is we are created to speak creation into existence. Our words brings things into existence. By our words of our mouth will be judged, will be condemned, or will or we'll ha we'll have what we say. It's very important to be careful what you say because your mouth was created to um, create things. Oops, my cat is... Um, okay, and gemstones and gold, if you look in the Bible, in the beginning, they were created on top of the earth, not in the earth. They only, they only were created under the earth at the fall of man. We were not to have to dig them up and to search for them. They were created for our pleasure. They were on top of the ground. That's Genesis 2, 11 and 12. Um, we were created to have fellowship with the Lord. Jesus died in our place and took our punishment to bring us back into fellowship with God. And we can expect to have a daily relationship with Him. God is supernatural and God is a spirit. So our relationship with God should be supernatural. We shouldn't be surprised when we um, have and can do things other people can't. When we lose things, we say, show me where it is, Holy Spirit. And He reveals it to us. Um, when we don't have an answer to a problem and the world can't figure it out, we just say, Holy Spirit, show us. And because we have a supernatural relationship with a supernatural God, um, we can expect to daily have supernatural things happen to us. And I'm not talking about the stuff, the stuff the New Age does is stolen and twisted because the supernatural belongs to Christians and the New Age and the cults and, and cults um, have stolen uh, the supernatural and twisted it and perverted it. Okay. Um, so we should expect uh, visitations from God, visitations uh, from angels, just like in the Bible, they give direction, just like the Holy Spirit. Um, transportation, uh, being transported in your body, uh, uh, that happened to uh, a couple people in the Bible. Being your spirit being transferred, trans, um, going from one place to another. Um, manna appearing, uh, just like in Bible days. Everything that happened in the Old and New Testament, the supernatural, is available for us. And we don't go seeking after it. We just expect it and have faith for it and receive it because we are created supernaturally, just like God. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, another thing I want to remind you of, um, in heaven there is worship. Every time you read the Bible, almost everything that you read about heaven is worship. Uh, people clapping, raising their hands, praising the Lord, shouting. Um, and the Bible talks about that. Those are all forms of worship. It's to get our physical body involved in the spiritual realm. Um, all those things are spiritual. We don't just sit there or sing a song. We, we use our whole body to worship God. And um, I'll go over the rest of this some other time. That's going to be it for today about um, peace. And uh, tomorrow we'll go over some other things about peace. And my name is Robin Bremer, and you're watching Walks with God, and I'm out for today.